All right. Um, hold on, Miss uh, Poplar. I'm trying to check and make sure that I've gotten the um, order to sign. Um, Miss Wright. Yes, ma'am. They act, they need the order, um, the appeal order for me uh, signed before they can take her payment. Is that correct? Um, I'm not sure. Oh, okay. yeah, I'm about to send it to you like the next I two minutes. All right, Miss Arnold, thank you. All right, Miss Poplar is coming to me in a minute. And uh, Miss, uh, is this uh, investigator? Is this Miss um, Folsom or Miss Gibson? All right, um, I'm going to need the courtroom back because. Uh, the investigators are about to share the video for Ms. Folsom and Ms. Gibson, and I think both of them in the courtroom. Thanks, Jones. Uh-huh. Yeah, don't do that, Jones. Huh? Don't do it. Don't do what? Don't do this. I mean... Don't do it. No, uh, I'm, I'm clear. I, I hear you. I, I'm here with you, but don't do it. Um, all right, investigator, you can tee it up whenever you're ready. Do you want Ms. Folsom to come to the podium? Yes, please, so she can see it clearly, what I'm seeing. All right, hold on a second before you run it. Let her come up. If it's on the big screen, she should be able to see it pretty well. Yeah, can you see that from here? Yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. All right. Um, you want to play it one more time? Okay. Miss Folsom? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, was that your car, the the first white one that we saw? Yes, ma'am, it was. All right, so Ms. Folsom, generally the lights on the bus are flashing, the yellow lights are flashing at the top of the bus when it stops, and that is your indication that it intends to stop, and the light, the flash, the uh, stop sign is gonna come out. So right as you were moving forward, the bus was already stopped, the lights at the top were already flashing, and then the stop sign came out at the side. Um, Tell me what your perspective. Oh, okay. Um, yes, sir. On a bad day, when I, I didn't see any lights flash, I just remember as I was going past that bus, the school arm, if you look back at the video, it, it opened just as I was approaching it. I wasn't cited for speeding, so I wasn't, you know, not in a position that I was, I was going at a normal speed. I wasn't speeding. But if I had stopped, as soon as I'm passing it, the school arm opens. I could have hit my brakes and caused a rear collision between that car that was behind me. So by the time I would have been able to do anything or react, it would have been an accident. And I had my three-year-old son in the back. So I, I wasn't speeding. I wasn't excited for that. So me going too fast wasn't an issue. It, I didn't see any flashing lights on the bus. But by the time that school arm came open, it was just as I was passing it. I didn't, have ample time to stop. Okay. Ms. Um, Williams? Yes, Your Honor. Um, based on the video, the it wouldn't give a strong indication that the yellow lights were flashing, especially given that the people behind um, Ms. Folsom had stopped um, quite, quite quickly after she um, ran through the stop sign. So the ten, uh, the so it would, it would show that because the lights were already black and she would have had an ample time to slow down, but just uh, based on the speed she was traveling, that would have she should have been driving slower to begin with um, in order to avoid avoid any mishap of smacking on her brakes. So it's a um, and, and potentially causing another or causing a collision. Um, so based on the fact that the lights were already flashing yellow on the bus and the stop sign um, had come out and she had passed as quickly as, as soon as the stop sign came out, 
so that she had no intention of stopping for that school bus. Um, so they would actually be quite reliable. All right. Um, the only issue that I have is that um, it's a, on a main thoroughfare. If it was on a side street, um, it'd be a little bit different. The only reason is that with it being on a main thoroughfare, the speed is probably going a little faster. Uh, the posted speed is probably a little bit faster. And because of that, um, I would uh, presume that um, that she was legally moving a little bit faster. And the yellow lights, um, I, it was close. So I'll give it to her. Miss um, um, Folsom, but, the, but from now on, what you need to know is when the yellow lights come on on a bus, first of all, when a bus stops, you need to prepare to stop. But when the yellow lights come on, that's your caution. So if you're looking at it from a red light, green light, yellow lights perspective, when the yellow lights on the top of the bus start flashing and that bus has stopped, that's your caution. And that means slow down because it's the red light is coming out on the side. Yes, okay. Um, all right. So um, I'll grant your appeal on the, uh, in this case just because it was very close and there were two cars coming behind you. Um, and if you... I believe you believed you were being cautious to not um, impede traffic behind you. All right. Okay, and Judge, I'm sorry. May I, may I ask a question again, please? I just want to make sure I understood what you were saying. Are the lights on the top of the bus or? Yes, ma'am. So when the light, when the bus start is stopping, um, the lights on the top of the bus and on the, like, the, if you're in the back, the lights at the back, at the top, are going to start flashing and you're in the front the lights on the front and the top are going to start flashing and maybe some on the side um they'll yellow and then the bus is stopped the lights are flashing yellow and then that side is going to come out okay yes ma'am thank you for that. So the yellow is your caution light okay all right i have one other question um yes, and I appreciate you dismissing this um that vehicle again it can be registered because i had to answer to this which is fine i have a second vehicle but how, when would they be notified that I can get my um, sticker for this car? Because the car is still operable. I just don't offer, I don't drive it because it doesn't have a registration on it. I don't, this doesn't involve anything with registration. So I wouldn't know anything about that. Yeah, that's how I found out about the ticket when I went to get my uh, registration. This yeah, it should have gone to your house. It should have been um, a notice to your house. But if they, if the if the um, address that they have on file for your vehicle is not the same, then you would have picked it up when you went on your registration thing. Is there anything I can get from the court today? Um, so in the event there is anything I can show them, they can see that it's been dismissed. Yes, ma'am. The you'll get a dismissal. You'll get an, a a granting of your appeal. You'll get that order. Just give Miss Williams your email address. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, ma'am. All right, uh, so just hold on for me, okay? All right, yes, Miss, Mr. DeRosier, raise your right hand for me. You solemnly Sol swear or affirm any testimony you give in this matter will be true. Yes, ma'am. All right, you can put your hand down. You're before the court with Mr. White as your attorney. You're before the court on case 2021-CR-07724 for simple assault and uh, reckless conduct. Uh, Mr. White, how does your client plead to the offenses of simple assault and reckless conduct? Guilty, Your Honor. Okay, by entering a plea of guilty to counts one and two, you give up the right to have a trial by jury or judge. You give up the right to have the state prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. You give up the right to have the presumption of innocence in your favor. You give up the right to confront witnesses, subpoena witnesses, present testimony and evidence on your behalf to not incriminate yourself or present any testimony or evidence against yourself. And if you're not a United States citizen, a plea of guilty, or no contest could negatively impact your immigration status. Do you understand all of these things, sir? Yes, ma'am. All right, factual basis and um, recommendation, please. Yes, Your Honor, on October the 5th of 2021, an officer was dispatched to seven, excuse me, six to Riverdale, Georgia, where the incident did occur in Clayton, excuse me, in Clayton County. At that time, the officer arrived on the scene 
Uh, the call was in reference to a domestic disturbance. Uh, the, the officer spoke with the uh, victim, Ms. I uh, who advised that her and the defendant, Mr. DeRosiers, had um, gotten into a, a verbal altercation. Uh, and then at that time, he went upstairs to his bedroom and grabbed the gun from the bedroom and then they continued to argue with the gun in his hand um, and at that time <clears throat> it seems that the defendant became increasingly aggressive and the uh, victim uh, stepped out outside the house uh, to call the police and then when the police arrived uh, the victim excuse me the defendant went to uh, hide the gun um and the uh he was taken into custody uh, the state is recommending uh 12 for count one 12 months to serve 30 days uh credit for the time that he has served uh, <clears throat> the ballots be probated a gun safety course uh, he would need to forfeit the weapon and uh, no contact with the victim and count two would be 12 months probation to run concurrent with count one Okay, Mr. White. Connor, we just ask that you accept the negotiated plea. Mr. DeRosier, why you have a gun? Um, it was a legal firearm. Uh, oh, uh sure. for the house. It was a gun for the house. How old are you? Twenty-three. The whole point of having a gun for the house, um, and I don't want you to get the impression that I'm anti-gun. I own, I carry, I shoot, but. The whole point of having a gun for the house is that you have the sense um, and the respect for what a gun can do. That means you're not just gonna pull it out in an argument because you're mad. You have to think very carefully before you pull a gun on somebody because it could easily have ended up in a tragedy with either the person, Miss uh, Marcin, being dead or with you being dead. A lot of times the person pulling the gun is the one that gets shot because this tells me that you, you're being reckless with a gun tells me you don't know Jack about handling a gun, how to safely handle a gun, how to secure a gun to make sure that nobody else gets hurt with a gun. You just got a gun because everybody in Georgia can get one, but you did it without, a, without regard for what that means. I mean, it is an awesome responsibility and you just, oh, I got a gun. I got mad. I'm going to pull my gun. That is the craziest thing. That is the craziest right. thing. And you not guarding your house by just having a gun that you just going to pull out on somebody. All right. I mean, I just don't. I, is any of this making sense? The, you know, what, let me just to give you a, 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 some background. So I used to be a magistrate court judge. And for magistrate court judges, we hear preliminary hearings. And that means it's like the police come in and they give a factual basis for why they arrested somebody. And then the other side, you know, kind of argues that that person shouldn't get arrested or shouldn't have to go to trial. Case should be dropped. Well, I'm listening to this case one day and this gentleman had shot his, shot a, another guy in the head. And by the end of the case, I was done because they had grown up together as brothers. They had known each other since kindergarten, but they were sitting in the room playing with a gun and the dude, you know, pulls out the gun. He's playing with it because he had a reckless disregard. Everybody who has a gun thinks they know how to handle a gun. So he had a reckless disregard for the gun until he blew a hole in the back of the dude's head because he was just playing around with a gun and didn't know what he was doing. Where the second worst one was two brothers sitting outside at a barbecue. One of them pulls out a gun. He thinking the gun is not loaded. He's showing off the gun. He shoots his own brother, kills him. It is too easy for a gun I, to kill somebody. For you actually, to recklessly brandish it. You what? I actually was the one in danger. And the um the other party in the case, Marcin, is not the one who who I got into the altercation with. This, so the whole case is that's why I'm pleading guilty now, because it's just because it's the Miss Marcin is actually my mother. And that's what I thought. To, and I was wondering about that. I was going to yeah, ask. Yeah, the gun, it was but, actually for I got into it with another someone else. 
okay. his name is not even being brought up. But, it's but okay. let me explain something to you. If you're using a gun for protection, one, you've got to know how to use it. And two, you don't just bring it out. You got to know that if you're pulling a gun on somebody, your intention is to defend yourself. All right. And that's not just waving a gun. That's not just pulling it out to say, I have a gun. Most people don't understand that if you're using a gun for self-defense, then you need to know you need to be trained in whether this is a time to pull a gun. And if I pull a gun, my intention is to shoot. And that shooting could result in somebody's death. So that's you nice. don't just recklessly pull a gun. You'd be better off getting you a bat. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm just saying. Because there's a lot of responsibility that comes with handling a gun. And this could have gone way wrong. All right, so I'm going to accept your plea. 12 months to serve, 30 days. I'll give you credit for the time that you serve. Um, is Miss Marcy, is she wanting to have no contact with him? Uh, I don't have I don't have any note to the contrary, Your Honor. Uh, there's also a second case. Okay, because looking at the house him. where he's sitting and the decorations, he's probably sitting in Miss Marcine's house right now. Mm -hmm. I don't That's know too many 23 year old young men who decorate with a grandfather clock and lace curtains. But um, oh, no, she doesn't have any. Hold on, Mr. DeRosier. Are we doing the second case today? What are we doing? We are, Your Honor. Okay, well, what's the second case? Let me see, because uh, we might as well knock all of that out. I just saw the first one. Oh, the second one. Okay, so 2022CR00137 for family violence ordinance violation. Ha! <laughs> exactly what I'm looking at. All right, and Mr. Uh, White is uh, your attorney on this case also. Mr. White, what is your client plea to the offense on this case? Guilty, Your Honor. All right. All right. Um, uh, Mr. White, by entering a plea of guilty to the family violence ordinance violation, you give up the right to have a trial by jury or judge. Do you understand all of these things, sir? And there's me. Do you understand all of these things, Mr. DeRosier? Yes, ma'am. All right. And so do you understand that this case is solely because you didn't listen to the bond conditions that said you were not to have contact with Miss. Um, um, I did listen to the bond conditions. This was uh, about a year ago, if I remember correctly. You sitting in her house. The bond conditions don't expire until your case is resolved. I heard her and she's speaking Rahatian Creole, which I'm pretty familiar with. <laughs> No, I'm not at my mom's house. I'm at my grandmother's house. This is her mother's house. Mm, okay. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not at All mom's right. house. Uh, factual basis recommendation, please. Yes, Your Honor. On November 21st of 2021, an officer was dispatched to 6273 Willowbrook Drive um, in Riverdale, Georgia, where this incident occurred in Clayton County. At that time, the officer <laughs> arrived on the scene. He spoke with the victim, Ms. Uh, um, who advised it? She, um, she actually wanted her son to be committed, uh, but the officer determined that Mr. Uh, the defendant, Mr. DeRosa, was in violation of the previous order uh, for no contact. Uh, the officer did not observe any physical injuries to uh, Ms. Walker, and the defendant was taken into custody. Uh, the state is recommending uh, 12 months to serve 40 days. Uh, credit for the time that he has been um, in custody, and that would run concurrent with the case ending in 07724. The balance will be probated for the defendant uh, to complete a mental health evaluation and follow up uh, with any treatment plan. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. White, anything on behalf of Mr. DeRosia? Your Honor, um, I just, in my understanding that the probation for this case is to terminate upon completion. I just wanted to make sure that was correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ms. Um, 
Get some water. The, I mean, that would be that would be that would be fine. Um, once he's completed the evaluation, you can ask on um, what a recommended treatment plan they've given for him. I agree. All right, so Mr. DeRocher, I'm going to accept your plea on the first case on count one. It's uh, 12 months to serve 30 days, credit for time served. Balance will be probated for you to take a gun safety course and forfeit the, the gun that was used in this um, crime on count they, two. Uh, they already have it. Okay, then it'll they'll keep it on count two um that'll run concurrent with count one um 12 months probation um and no new violations of the laws of the state of georgia um you're to have no contact on count one i'm sorry you're to have no contact with and you're not to go back to six um Layton county on count on the uh next case ending in Next case ending in uh, 00137, um, for 12 months to serve 40 days, credit for time served, balance will be probated for you to take a mental health evaluation and any treatment that may be ordered. You're not to possess a firearm until such time as you've been given um, the, um, you've taken the mental health evaluation and found to not need any additional treatment. Um, this will run concurrent with uh, the previous case. Um, and the uh, termination upon completion is determined only, up, it will happen only after a mental health evaluation has been given and all treatment that has been recommended has been completed. I understand. All right, so sir, I'm gonna put you in a breakout room um, with our probation expert who's going to assist you with figuring out what you need to do for probation. One question, um, I can't, I, sorry, I can't go back to mom's house until I complete the probation? Yes. Okay. If you need um, to go back, um, Ms. Wright or whoever's from the clerk's office, I can't see the whole screen right now, but if you need to go back one time um, to get personal items that are necessary for you to continue your life somewhere else, then um, you need to uh, make an appointment with the sheriff's office. The sheriffs will stand by to keep the peace, but they won't carry anything. They won't uh, transport anything. So you need to have whoever you need there to help you transport. Um, and carry any of the items that you wish to have. All right. All right. All right. So I'm going to put you in breakout room number six with Mr. Carmichael. Once you finish speaking with Mr. Carmichael, you're free to go as long as you understand everything that he's explained to you, okay? 